In this video, we are going to test, review, and rate the Prisma app in Canva. Let's go. What is up everyone, Ronnie here. Let's jump right into this tutorial and start talking about the Prisma app. So I am here on my Discover app section on the homepage. And from here, I can see, I can have an overview of all the apps that are integrated up to this day with Canva. So I can see one of the latest one right here, one that is suggested to me is Prisma. Apply art effect to your photos. So today we are going to be reviewing this app, this integration with Canva. We will be looking quite deep into this. At the end of the tutorial, I'm gonna show you my pros and cons, what I liked, what I disliked about the app and give you a rating. So a score out of five for this specific app. And in this series, I intend to review more apps. I intend to compare all the different apps, maybe not all at once, but I'm going to talk about all of these apps and give them a rating so that we can have maybe a chart with the best apps, my favorite apps. And I would like you guys to also recommend me which app you would like me to rate and to review here on the channel. So today, Prisma, let's click on it and let's read what Canva is saying about this app. So turn photos into painting. So this is the promise for the Prisma app. It looks really promising actually. So apply AI powered artistic styles to your photos photos to make them stand out. So I can see a quick overview here. I can use the, the little arrow to actually see. So it looks great with landscapes, portraits as well. See the cat here with a third of the photo not processed and then the rest process. So this looks great. I can start from here, from my Discover app section by using the app in a new design. So let's do that. Canva will ask me what uh, type of document I want to create. Let's go for an Instagram post. And this is where we are going to land. So Canva will open a demo photo with the panel right here, already with all the Prisma effects ready for me to try, okay? So I can see basically a photo which is selected. There's the edit image button. So this gives me an indication that this specific app will be found under my edit image button, okay? I will come back to this later. But then I have here like nine different filters. I believe they are called art filters in uh, Prisma. And so let's click on the first one called Camelcade to see how this photo can turn into a painting. Yeah, the effect is pretty stunning actually. It looks great with the grass, uh, even the character here. I really like this. Let's try another one, uh, maybe pattern. Okay, so here I see kind of like little mosaic in my design and all these colors, it looks like a different style of painting. Let's try one last one, maybe tiramisu because I've always loved this dessert. Let's see how it looks like. Okay, this one looks more like a photo, but you can still see if I look closer that it is more of a, of a drawing, of a painting. So from the get-go, this app looks pretty promising, to be honest, but I figured if I really want to rate this app correctly, I need to take into consideration the context. So what is Prisma? What other versions of Prisma exist out there? And I'm gonna come to that in a second. And then compare the Canva integration with these other versions of Prisma out there and what you can do with them. Okay, so let's start doing this and then at the end, like promise, I'll give you what I liked, what I disliked, and my rating. All right, so let's dig a little bit deeper and try to figure out what is Prisma and what other versions of Prisma exist out there on the internet, okay? So first, what is Prisma? Prisma is a photo editing app that has been designed and launched in 2016 by a few different Russian developers, okay? So 2016, that's the first piece of information which is important, in my opinion, it's not a new app, it's already five or six years old. Next is what it does, okay? So I grabbed this snippet of text from the App Store and it says, you don't need to be an experienced photo editor to turn photos into captivating digital art. Why? Because there's Prisma for it. With the Prisma photo editor, it's easy to unleash the artist within and go from average photo to mesmerizing edit 
in seconds. Okay, so I think it's really focused and this is taken from the App Store. So from the description of the mobile app, for Prisma. So if I move to this next slide right here, I can see that there are actually three different versions of Prisma. You have Prisma in the Canva ecosystem. So that's what we just experienced in Canva. I would call this the Canva app. Then you have Prisma as a mobile app. So this is a standalone mobile app for iOS and Android. And I will show you how it looks and what you can do with it in a second. And then you have Prisma for your web browser. Okay, so there is a version of Prisma which is actually accessible via Canva that you can use on your web browser. So the first thing we are going to do is to have a quick look at what you can do from the mobile app and from the browser app. And then we'll come back to Canva and compare the different functionalities to what you can actually do from within Canva. This will give us a complete overview of the Prisma ecosystem and the Prisma apps in general. So we can really judge if this Canva integration is good or not so good, okay? So let's do this. The first thing I want to do is to jump straight into my phone, okay? We are going to talk about Prisma as the mobile app. All right, so I am here on my App Store landing page for the Prisma Photo Editor, okay? So I have a bunch of information right here. What I wanted to show you is uh, these mockups right here. So it says App Store App of the Year, not sure which year, but then it shows me a couple of screenshots of the app and what you can actually do with it. 500 plus creative filters, turn photos into art, adjust to perfection so I can see a bunch of different settings right here that I can use. New cool filters every day. So this shows me that this is actually an, uh, a dynamic ecosystem where new stuff is coming regularly. Okay, so I have installed the app into my phone and this is what it looks like, okay? I have uploaded a first photo right here, photo of Diana and myself at the beach uh, taken yesterday. So this is what it looks like. So I do have my photo here and then I have a couple of buttons and my art effects, my art filters right here at the bottom. So there is actually a bunch of them and you will see that some of them are free and some of them have the little padlock icon indicating me, if I want to click on this one, indicating me that these are part of the paid plan for the app. Okay, so they will give me an overview of what the art effect looks like, but then if I want to apply it, I will have to subscribe and become a creator or a pro member of the app. I'm gonna X that. What I want to show you from here is these art effects, okay? I'm gonna click on the second one called Eisenberg, and this is what it does. In one click, and it was almost instantaneous, so no lag, no loading time. This is what it did to my photo. Now, the cool thing here is these buttons right here. If I click on the first one, the little paintbrush right here, I can have access to some settings, okay? The first setting is SD or HD. I believe HD is a pro only feature, yes. But what's interesting here is the style intensity slider. So if I slide down, you can see that I can go from no effect to 100% effect. So this is really interesting and will help me kind of be more precise, more granular with how much of the effect I want to apply. Let's stick with 100%, click on apply, and then let's see what the second button here does, okay? Tap on it, and I really like this. This is basically allowing me to select which layer of my photo is being affected by the effect. Okay, so here I can see it's only the subject of my photo. So my two main characters here, Diana and Ronnie, have been isolated from the background. So there is clearly some background removing action going on here. And then the rest of the background is completely normal. That's my normal photo but the filter has been applied to the main object of the photo. I can click on this button again and then it's inverted. Now it's my background which is affected by the filter. I really love that. And if I tap a third time, then the entire photo is affected. So again, just the subject, just the background, both. And yeah, so these are my three options. The third button right here are a bunch of frames, okay? So these are just frames, nothing really too fancy about them. So I will go with no frames. Canva also has a bunch of different frames, maybe not in the Prisma app, 
but you can add the Prisma app effect and then add some more frames. Anyways, uh, let's just cancel the frames for now. I have this other button right here, which is kind of like a photo. So what is this? This says background. And from here, I can see a collection of different backgrounds. Let's tap on one. Oh, okay. So what it does is that it replaces the background of my photo for some other backgrounds right here from the library. This is also super powerful. I really love that because you have your effect and you can swap the background so easily. And I believe, <laughs> I've seen some pretty funky ones here, but I believe you can also select your own background. So if I was to uh, use, for example, the screenshot of our Facebook group, I could have that as the background. So really cool features here given to me for free in the mobile app. So I'm gonna leave it there for now and come back to the presentation. So we just saw the app in iOS and Android with everything it can do. And to be honest, I was pretty impressed by this. I would clearly give this a 4.5 rating. The mobile app is really cool. Okay, so now let's move on and see what Prisma looks like on your mobile browser. So how do you get there? Well, you can get there from the Prisma app uh, little explanation right here. If I click here again, I can see that I can start using the app or if I click on this link right here, it says Prisma by Prisma Labs. If I click on Prisma Labs, it will open Prisma in my browser. And you can see that this is still in beta. So this is what the web version of Prisma looks like. I see a big photo here and I see my uh, art effects right there. I can count 12 effects, which is a little bit different from the nine that we had in Canva. So I believe there are three more from the web version of, uh, of Prisma. And then I have all my other styles right here that are locked. If I click on them, I will have this pricing table popping up. So I can see that there are three different plans. You can use Prisma for free and you will have one upload per day, 12 art filters, no HD processing and no premium mobile app but it's free. Then you have two different plans, Creator and Pro, which all have pretty much the same options. The price is like you pay $9.99 for Pro, $4.99 for Creators. The only difference is the number of uploads per day. Now, what are uploads? Well, before shooting this tutorial, I tried uploading my own image and also worth mentioning, I created an account, okay? So I didn't pay for any upgrade, but I did log in. So I did create an account to have access to the whole experience in Prisma on my web browser. So I created an account and this allowed me to upload my own photo, okay? So if I click on open a new image, I can select an image from my computer, see? But it says out of imports today, you've reached your daily limit of imported photos. This is because while testing this, before shooting this tutorial, I actually uploaded one of my own images. It was there, I could play around with it, and then I closed the browser tab, and then when I opened it again, it was not there anymore, okay? So I had to pretty much use another photo from the library. So this is why you see the photo of this lady right here. To be honest, she's more beautiful than me, so you're not losing anything in the transaction. All right, so let's see what we can do here. Let's apply an effect that was not on the Canva side of things. Okay, I believe pepperoni was not on Canva side of things. So yeah, this is what it looks like. Looks pretty cool. Uh, coziness was also not there, I believe. This also looks great. Would be a nice music album cover, for example. And believe is the third effect that was not. This one also pretty cool. So basically the app works in a similar way, just that you have a little bit more controls here. I can see this slider as well. You see the intensity slider? This is something I don't believe we had in the Canva app. I will go back and double check but I believe we didn't have that. So the web app is, in my opinion, not as good as the mobile app, but it does have features that Canva doesn't allow you to have in the Canva integration, okay? Like this slider right here was not an option in Canva. Also, I have three more Prisma essential filters or styles available to me, believe, pepperoni, and coziness that were not available in Canva. Now I'll go back 
to my Canva app here. So by selecting my image, click on edit image, go to Prisma, and you see I only have nine. I say nine because the first one is none. So there's no effect here. And then three by three, that's nine. So you have your nine uh, filters, okay? Now, if I try to apply a filter again, so let's go for this one, I don't see any little slider icon or settings icon anywhere. Basically, I can apply the effect 100%, or not apply the effect. And I can choose between one of these nines and apply. And that's pretty much what I can do. There is no option for me to control the intensity of the effect. We completely lost the uh, cool features that we had in the mobile app to be able to select which layer of your picture you want to apply the effect to. Also, I cannot play around with the classic settings, I would say, like the, the different adjust buttons from within the Prisma menu right here. So I cannot add more luminosity, I cannot add more contrast, uh, shadow, etc., etc. I would have to do that as a separate edit, I would say, with my image. I would have to apply this one and then go back to edit image and then the adjust button. Okay, so it's not built in the Prisma app. And also I cannot easily swap the background. Like I really love this feature from the mobile app where they would keep my uh, subject with the effect applied to it. And then I could just go through a bunch of different backgrounds and use that as the background. I do not have that in Canva. So I am a little bit disappointing so far that from the three different versions, this one seems to be the less complete of them all. The only thing I can see that this one has, like the Canva integration has on the web version is that I am not limited to one upload per day because here I can add more images. Let's just uh, select another image of myself and then click on it, edit image, go to Prisma, apply an effect and you will see that I won't have any limitation message or error message. It's just going to apply the effect and let me fly with it if you want. Okay, now I think we have a pretty good overview of what Prisma is, what other versions of Prisma exist out there. We've seen that from the three versions, the Canva integration seems to be the lightest one, the one with the less features available, unfortunately. So now I would like to try to push this a little bit deeper, a little bit further and see the different use cases that we could have with this Prisma app into Canva. So is this useful for marketers? Is this useful for social media content creation? Or is it more like a gadget app that is nice to have, but is not gonna change your life? Okay, let's try to find out. So I have different use cases here that I would like to go through. The first one is to work with a portrait, okay? Which is what I just did. And the result is pretty convincing, to be honest. Let me edit this image one more time. I will restore to the original and go to Prisma one more time. Let's try another effect that we haven't tried yet, like passion fruit, for example, on this specific image and see if it really gives me the impression of this being a drawing I'm gonna set this as the background. Oh, the effect was not applied, so let's apply it one more time. Okay, so this is what I have, and it does look like a painting. I have to admit, this is pretty well done. So when working with portraits, this does a good job. I like the effect. I think this is something I could use, maybe not regularly, but from time to time. Now, the second use case I would like to illustrate here is with a landscape. Okay, so instead of a person, let's try to have a nice landscape. I have this countryside road right here. I'm gonna set this as a background, not do the same mistake twice. This actually looks very much like where I am from like this little town in the south of Belgium where I grew up. This looks exactly like that. Okay, so let's apply Prisma to this specific photo. And this time I'm gonna go with a snow photo. Let's, let's try storm and see how it looks on this particular photo. Okay, so this is much more abstract than the other effects that may be a little bit too strong, but it does look like a painting. So maybe I will change this to a cavalcade I think that was one of my favorites so far because it has all these uh, brush. Yeah, this one looks really cool. It looks like a drawing. 
actually. So I'm gonna apply this. So I can see that so far it looks good on portraits, it looks good on landscapes, but let's try to push it a little bit further. Can I use this on my logo, for example? If it's the case, I could maybe start really playing around with this. Can I use this on a social media icon to stylize my icons to put on my website? on a specific piece of design so it looks more hand-drawn. That would be great. Let's try first with a logo. So let me grab a logo, uh, the Team Rondi logo, for example. Make that bigger. Select it, edit image, and go to Prisma. And let's try the first one. It doesn't really matter if it works on one. I can see, uh, okay. So there is a big uh, black rectangle now showing behind my logo. Maybe if I apply it, it will go away. And no, it doesn't seem to go away. It is part of that image. So it seems like Prisma had a hard time dealing with that transparent background of my logo. Let's try something else here with this logo right here. See if the same problem persists. Yeah, unfortunately, the same problem uh, happened again. It seems like Prisma doesn't do a good job at dealing with transparent backgrounds. So I cannot really work with logos. I cannot really work with icons. And I guess I cannot really work with text in general, because if I create a text, export that text as a PNG with a transparent background and re-upload it into Canva and apply the effect, I will have the same problem with handling the transparent background. Now, one last thing I would love to try is to see if this works with a Bitmoji, okay? So let's take a Bitmoji, uh, one that doesn't show any obscenity. Okay, this one. This one looks great, Milky Ronnie. Uh, edit image, Prisma, and please give me something that works. I'm gonna try the lizard, and unfortunately it doesn't work. I still have this black square of death behind my actual Bitmoji. So this is pretty much not gonna help me either with text, logos, icons, or Bitmojis, or anything really that has a transparent background. All right, guys, I think I gave you a pretty good overview of everything you can do with Prisma. Now let's jump to the last part of this tutorial, which is my verdict. Should you use it? Should you not use it? Is it good? Is it not worth it? Let's find out. Well, the first thing I would say is who is this for? Okay, it's obviously not for social media marketers because you cannot work with text, you cannot with uh, logos, icons or anything of that sort. So it's not for marketers. It's not for business in general. And it's also not for illustrators or people who are really into digital drawing, etc. because you don't have enough control. Okay, if you could have the powerful feature that we have on the app, or if you even had like the intensity slider that you can find on the web version, then maybe. But here Canva doesn't give you any control at all. So it's like either on or off and there's only nine filters. So I wouldn't think this is going to be very useful for illustrators or people who are really serious about creating digital painting or digital art. I think who this is good for is basically casual Canva users who like to use Canva to design and have fun with and maybe create some cool visuals for social media, but not professionally, okay? So the casual Canva designers will probably enjoy playing around with this because it is possible to create great looking photos and turn them into digital art, portraits and landscape. So yeah, you can probably have fun with this. Now, what I liked about Prisma on Canva is that you have a good selection of filters and they are quick to apply to create a hand-drawn aesthetic to your photos. You also have an unlimited amount of uploads. So there's no daily limit like you would have on the web version of Prisma. And it looks great for portraits and landscape. But on the other hand, what I didn't like is that we cannot handle transparent background. So impossible to work with text, logos, bitmojis, and the likes. So this is a little bit disappointing in my opinion. Also, there is less filter options. Why give us only nine filters when there are 12 on the web version and probably up to 30, 40, if not 50 free filters in the mobile app. So why only nine? And then of course, 
why keep away from us the most powerful features like the ability to play with the background, the ability to add frames or to choose which layer you really want to apply your effects to, which you will find in the mobile version. So yeah, that's pretty much what I didn't like. And finally, last thing I didn't like is that there is no intensity slider. You cannot adjust the effect to your taste in the Canva app. So all of this leads me to a final rating of 2.3 out of 5 for the Prisma app in Canva, okay? I'm not talking about the Prisma experience in general because on mobile, I would give Prisma a good 4.5 out of 5 because this was really good. But my opinion, if you are going to use Prisma, use it on your mobile phone and then export that into your Canva editor and play around with this. Thank you for watching. I hope you had fun. Let me know which other app you would like me to review, rate and comment on. And I will do so in the next episode of Let's Review Apps Together. Thank you for watching. I will see you in the next video. Orion.